from Dear Portugang to the Baim. This is 10 ways that living in Portugal will change you. Taste good, taste good, taste good, taste good. Weekend. It's Portuguese good. Ah, Portugal. That magical land where sunsets never end. The wine flows like water, and being late to a party makes you the life of the party. It's like Narnia, but with better weather and no evil witches. I moved here expecting sun, sea, and maybe a couple of cultural quirks. But oh boy, did I underestimate the transformation that was about to unfold. So buckle up as we dive into the top 10 Portuguese habits I picked up that have turned me into a bona fide local. Ah yes, the Portuguese are masters of the art of small talk and bom dia is their weapon of choice. You can't escape it. You're more likely to be greeted by a stranger here than you are to avoid tourist traps in central Lisbon. As someone who used to cherish my introverted bubble, the abundance of good mornings was overwhelming at first, but hey, now I'm practically the Oprah of bom dias, sprinkling them everywhere I go. In Portugal, coffee isn't merely a caffeinated beverage, it's a lifestyle. Gone are my days of sipping over sweetened lattes. Now, I'm all about that um cafe life. That's a straight up espresso shot for those not in the know. And if you think an espresso is just an espresso, oh, you poor uninitiated soul. Here, it's a social contract, a signal that says, let's pause life and ponder, preferably about beaches and seafood. Remember the dreary lunch at your desk culture? In Portugal, that's heresy. Here, lunch is a two hour saga, usually extending to a leisurely three if you count the ceremonial coffee at the end. What was once a sad sandwich between emails is now a three course marathon, sometimes capped with a siesta. Trust me, you haven't lived until you've time blocked relaxation into your daily work schedule. Get into a conflict? Oh, you naive soul. Here, conflicts are resolved faster than you can say Cristiano Ronaldo. The Portuguese philosophy, talk it out, but don't shout it out. Just think of them as the Canadians of Europe, minus the snow and with a lot more wine. And me, I'm basically Gandhi now, if Gandhi enjoyed a good bottle of Vino Verde. You know that jolt of anxiety when you realize that you're going to be late? Well, that's ancient history. In Portugal, tardiness isn't just tolerated, it's celebrated. Show up 15 to 30 minutes late and you're punctually Portuguese. An hour late with a bottle of Douro Red, you're practically knighted. Forget fashionably late, I'm stylishly procrastinated. Ah, family gatherings. They've transformed from a quarterly chore to a weekly delight. Picture Thanksgiving, but every Sunday, and without the awkward political debates. Instead, replace them with spirited conversations about which region has the best pastries. Let's just say I found a second family, and they come with the added perk of teaching me the secrets of bacalao preparation. You could take a Portuguese out of Portugal, but good luck taking Portugal out of them. They're proud of their roots, and you know what? They respect yours too. It's like a mutual cultural admiration society. Once you live here, you not only admire the culture, you embody it. You'll see me chanting along in a fadu bar or passionately arguing about the merits of Benfica over Porto. I've traded my generic pride for a blend of local patriotism mixed with a dash of international sophistication. Greetings here involve a kiss on each cheek which was a curveball for my personal space boundaries. But hey, when in Lisbon, do as the Lisboetas do. Men, you get a pass with a hug. Ladies, start practicing that cheek to cheek ear kiss. Once a blatant violation of my two foot radius personal bubble, now an affectionate ritual I eagerly partake in. If you're not a fan of up close and personal greetings, consider this your immersion therapy. It's like the social equivalent of jumping into the deep end. And guess what? I've become a damn good swimmer. Here, people talk about their next meal while eating their current one. It's all about that foodie life. Don't even get me started on codfish. 
It's the unofficial national animal. They've got 365 ways to cook it, one for each day of the year. I've become a walking, talking Michelin guide, minus the pretentiousness, and plus a whole lot of enthusiasm for codfish. In Portugal, the warmth you give is the warmth you get. It's like living in a never-ending cycle of good karma. This one's not even funny, guys. It's just good life advice. I'm now stuck in a glorious cycle of paying it forward, only to have it come back tenfold as a hearty Bob Dias from my fellow villagers, or random boxes of vegetables from my neighbours. So there you have it. I moved to Portugal. Now I'm pretty much a part-time philosopher with a tan. And if you want to unlock the secrets of living the good life, the Portuguese have got it all figured out, except maybe how to win the Eurovision again. But hey, nobody's perfect. Okay, if you're new around here and you like this type of content, please consider subscribing. It really, really helps me. And if you like the video, please give it a like. And I really want to hear your views, so don't forget to share them in the comments section below the video. Muito obrigado, amigos. Ciao.